Welcome to the SVG TV News for Thursday, December 28th. With the details tonight, I'm Khalil Cato. The projected outturn for 2023 for the government finances on the fiscal side is a pretty good one. So says Do Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves on radio yesterday. Last year we did nearly 6% growth, 5 point something percent. This year we're doing 6. Next year we targeted in a similar number. We're projected to be a similar number. In 2025, a number close to 5. Last year... We were the fastest growing economy in the Caribbean other than Guyana. This year, the same thing. Next year, we project it to be the same thing. Incidentally, it is, it is when economic growth is proceeding at its highest in our country. Between, it, 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 and when you have more jobs than ever before, at the time when um, you have some people say, change the government. You want to change us when we're doing so well? And where the other side you know, offering anything near as good and putting forward some snake oil salesmen and women ideas which, which don't have no practicality, no resonance at all. Look, in at the end of the year 2020, the gross domestic product of this country, that is the, the, the aggregate of all goods and services produced in the year, was $2.3 billion. By September this year, it was $2.87 billion. Between 20, so 2021, 2022, 2023, in three years, it moved up by $540 million production in the country. Johnny P, that's remarkable. And wages have been rising. In fact, between in the year 2000, at the end of 2000, the gross domestic product was eight, just under $800 million EC. It's now 2.87. It's about three and a half times 2,000. <laughs> and the inflation hasn't gone up more than one half of the times, more than one half of what it was then. It's remarkable. And with, despite all the storms and the COVID and the volcanic eruption, it's a, it's a remarkable story. According to the Prime Minister, at the end of the year 2000, there were about 28,000 people with the National Insurance Service, the NIS, as active contributors. And at present, the number has moved up to over 43,000. You're talking about 14,000 more. But the population has remained flat. <laughs> so when I hear about these, these mythical 40% um, unemployment number, I say where they, where they are. Check the, check the list of people who pay in NIS. That, that's the real test, you know, Johnny P. And not everybody who is working paying NIS. Eh? Not everybody own a Kong people is a smaller number. Not a lot of domestics pay domestic workers pay NIS. Many construction workers don't pay NIS. Many farm workers. They estimate about twenty percent of the people who are employed, gainfully employed, don't pay NIS. But we see the numbers have increased. No. Where they where they come from? Mars? There are people who are employed. So I look at I look at the NIS registrants as a proxy for the number of people who you have employed in the country, and you add twenty percent to it because that's the estimate as to the number who are gainfully employed but who not on the NIS register. We do have unemployment, but how you measure unemployment, Johnny P? You have to be able to work. You're willing to work, you're looking for work, and you can't find work. But if you ain't looking for work, but work day, how are you unemployed? You have to be looking for work. You have to be able to work. You have to want to work, and you're looking for work. And if you can't find, but some people just get up and don't want to do nothing. But they'll tell you they're unemployed. And of course, they're not working. But if you're not looking for work, you probably value leisure more than you love value work. And you're getting some things from your family overseer or some, somebody mining you. Eh? You do a hustle now and again. Eh? So we have, we have to have a realistic discussion on these things. Noting that this year, for the first time, they had expenditure, which included recurrent and capital in excess of a billion dollars, 
Prime Minister Gonzales says this year they are also projecting to spend over $350 million from central government for capital projects. That's a big number. The biggest number ever. Last year was the biggest. The year before that was the biggest up to that point. <laughs> and we ain't talking no private sector, like Sandals, which is a, in excess of $540 million, which is, then it doesn't include the public sector, the, the, the public sector spending on, on capital projects outside of, of um, the central government. The big ones we spend a lot of money in, like on water and um, national properties. Those, those, are the, those are the bigger ones outside. The Central Water and Sewage Authority, the CWSA, says it is working to fully restore the water supply to residents in North Windward and parts of North Central Windward following intermittent disruptions to the supply over the Christmas weekend. On NBC Radio yesterday, during the Prime Minister's face-to-face -face discussion, the general manager of the CWSA, Winsbert Quau, called into the program to provide an update on the situation. All right, so we have opened up the system and we're feeding the areas Christmas Day, Boxing Day, because we allowed, it, we allowed the tank to build up the day before Christmas Day. And um, we're feeding Boxing Day, Christmas, Christmas Day and Boxing Day, and um, things were normalizing. But last night, some rains came, and you, our water became turbid again, excessively muddy. So we had to shut down the system last night around 7 p.m. So some of the areas, the areas would still would be out of water today, and it takes about a day and a half to two days to clear up. So we are hoping that we will that will clear up and we'll start to, to feed again um, by. Uh, today is um, Wednesday, so by, by Thursday, Friday, we can tomorrow, Friday, we can get water back into the system. Okay. Now, how, how have you increased the number of trucks? Because you you, you remember I, I call you from Christmas Eve in Monbentic and some people in the back village didn't get yet. You increased the number? Right. So on Christmas Eve, because we were building up the tank, we, we fed, as I said, we fed Christmas Day and boxing day so we didn't have any we did not have to deliver water christmas day and boxing day but today we are meeting to determine um what those needs are we're going to meet with nemo as well we're going to meet internally and we're going to look at increasing the number of delivery trucks and water so that we can meet the needs of the people out there commenting on the matter prime minister gonzalez said the cwsa has been doing a reasonable job with the distribution of water to the residents in the affected areas what happened? There, there's a lot of um, volcanic material on the soil. Remember, Professor Robinson had told us between three to five years we have this problem. And some rains, a lot of rains came in the hills, in the mountains. And the heaviness places waterlogged and it has a, the, the soil has a lot of weight. So it slid. So you have a landslide. Yeah? And the water became muddy. So they had to switch it off now. And then it had cleared up, they switched it on back. Um, and then it got muddy again. But they had been delivering. Um, CWSA has been working with Nemo. And on Christmas Eve, when I was in Byra, I saw a Braxa truck also was taking out water. Braxa also joined the, um, joined the distribution. Um, and there, there are a couple of rivers, which are like one in, 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 in Langley Park, which is still fairly clean water. Naturally, if you're going to drink it, you have to boil it. Um, it's sensible if you do that. But they've been distributing. Um, and any time I got complaints, I'll call, I'll call Mr. Quo, I'll call Winsbot Quo, or I'll call C um, Nemo. Uh, when I went through the night, Christmas Eve, I was in Monbentic. Some people told me that in the back village, you know, um, the truck didn't come there. But the truck can't go everywhere. The truck has to go at certain central points and people have to go to the truck. Eh? Truck could make as many different stops as, as practicable, but it, it can't come to your doorstep all the time. So you have to, uh, you have to give and take now. Obviously, some people are in convenience. 
The Prime Minister also noted that he received a report at Cabinet from the head of the SVG Meteorological Service, Billy Jeffers, which indicated that global warming is taking a toll on the water supply in the country. When, when I was at school, Johnny P, when I was at primary school and I was at secondary school, primary school in the 50s, secondary school in the 60s, and I went to grammar school in 1959, January. So I left in the mid-60s. We were taught that St. Vincent and Grenadines had an average of 100 inches rain per year. The last 30 years, however, the average is 85 inches. But this year, Billy Jeffers told the cabinet last week that the rainfall this year was 22% less than the 30-year the average of 85%. 22% less than that 85. Now, in this year coming up, you're predicting that this year we'll have more dry spells than in, 20, in 2024 than in 2023. We have a number of the institutions for the state have had, like the schools and clinic have had tanks. Some have not had, and they have some in storage which they have to put in at these institutions. But we have to try and get some more tanks to help people. Um, but I just want to say to everybody, from the time of Sufri, we had removed all duties on water tanks. And so you, and simple pumps too, you don't, you don't, no duties on them either. But, but I want to alert persons, but I'll, we have set up a committee under the chairmanship of Sabota Caesar, but it involves CWSA, it involves agriculture, it involves Vinlec, um, it involves meteorological service, you know, we just call a, a water supply committee to address potentially, which could be a serious problem. You know, Johnny P, so we have to um, have to monitor it clo closely and, and have contingency measures um, in place. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Transport and Works, Montgomery Daniel, says government is interested and committed to the repairs of the bridge leading to Fort Charlotte, one of this country's tourism sites. Responding to a question recently in Parliament, <clears throat> excuse me, from opposition MP for West Kingstown, Daniel Cummings, on the work on the bridge, including its completion date, which has been missed by it has been missed several times. Minister Daniel said the project involves the design and subsequent restoration of a, a historic arch bridge located at Edinburgh on the way to Fort Charlotte. And after several unsuccessful attempts to engage a consultant with, a, with sufficient experience in restorative designs, an agreement was finally reached with Stanstick of Barbados. The consultancy is now in its final stages of implementation, where they are required to present their recommended tender documents, which will be tailored to the design adopted. Madam Speaker, these documents are anticipated by mid-February of 2024. Adding to the completion of this project implementation is the existence of another project in the immediate vicinity, the Fort Charlotte Rehabilitation Project. Both these projects are unable to be, execute, to be executed simultaneously. When work is being done on the bridge project, materials and equipment needed on the fort rehabilitation will not be accessible. The procurement stages for the rehabilitative project are significantly more advanced than the bridge project. It was for these reasons that a decision was taken to allow the Fort Rehabilitative Project to proceed first. Noting that the anticipated completion for the Fort Rehabilitation Project is at the end of May 2024, Minister Daniel said the period between the completion of the design consultancy of the bridge and the completion of the construction of the Fort Rehabilitation Project will be used to get the most suitable contractor for the bridge via the selective tendering approach. 
According to Minister, Minister Daniel, the suggestions are that the construction period for the bridge will be between 8 to 10 months, and at the end of the tender process, when a contract has been signed, the construction period will be known. The Caribbean Transformation Digital Sorry, the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project, CARD TP, is expected to make life much easier for Vincentians. This is according to Communications Officer of the project, Jennifer Richardson, while addressing the prize giving ceremony for Festive Friday promotions. She listed some of the ways in which the project will make Vincentians' lives easier. Just imagine being able to sit in your homes, in your offices, or in your lands. Once you have internet connection, and at the click of a button, you are able to pay your driver's license, file and pay your taxes, pay for a birth certificate, conduct a land and property transactions, and the list goes on. Imagine the time you would save not standing on the lines in the various government departments. Imagine what you can do with all that time saved. Can you see the vision? No. I encourage you to get comfortable with your devices, especially the technology immigrants like me. The OECS Commission is the implementing agency for the regional components of the World Bank IDA grant-funded Caribbean Digital Transformation Project Card TP. The development objective of the project is to increase access to digital services, technologies and skills by governments, businesses and individuals in the participating Eastern Caribbean countries. The project is expected to contribute to increased digital connectivity, digital public services, and the creation of technology-enabled businesses and jobs across the participating countries, the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The, ma the maternity ward at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital was a hub of joy as doctors and midwives worked together in delivering three Christmas babies, all boys. Nalisha Nero was the first to give birth on Christmas Day at around 2.39 a.m. Her baby boy weighed 7 pounds 7 ounces. The second mother to give birth on Christmas Day was Branisha Alexander, who gave birth at around 4 a.m., with her baby boy tipping the scale at 6 pounds, six, sorry, 6 pounds 9 ounces. The third Christmas baby boy belongs to Zanik Roberts, who gave birth at 5.55 p.m., and he weighed 7 pounds 4 ounces. All, the, all three mothers and their babies are in good health. The proud mothers who were giving birth for the second time shared their joy with SVG TV News via a telephone interview. Good at first, then coming into Christmas Day, which was like maybe midnight, sorry. The pain started coming stronger and stronger, and it was more painful than the first one. It was very... I don't even know how to describe that pain. <laughs> yes. But it was the nurse. I had good help from the nurses. They encouraged me to do my best and encouraged me to keep the faith <laughs> that it will come soon. The best part is, well, being there for him and continue to be there for him through ups and downs even though it was a lot of pain. I chose the name Christian because after my boyfriend had given his life to Christ, I got pregnant because we were trying to conceive for a while. But after he gave himself to Christ, I got pregnant. And this baby was supposed to be born in January. On January the 10th was my due date, but eventually I got it on Christmas Day, so I say it's a blessing from God. <laughs> God is probably trying to tell us something, I don't know. Well, it was a quick experience for me because of my first Compared to my first child, I spend more hours in labor than this. This one was just like in a flash. Um, I, it's like I was home on Christmas Day, I ate my breakfast, I ate my lunch, and the rest of the day 
I decided to take a nap. And from there, after taking a nap, I just felt this sharp pain in my ab- abdomen. And from there, it's like everything go downhill. Um, no time for anything. I I rushed to the hospital, and from there, I was delivered. My son. A number of locals and visitors flocked to Heritage Square in capital Kingstown on the final morning of the 2023 Christmas and Nine Mornings Festival. SVG TV News spoke with some of these persons who gave their feedback on the festival. I don't know for other people, but I think it's just a unique um, festival. And I think people like to experience, you know, just the sort of Christmas spirit, Vince's style. Feeling of just being together as a community and celebrating our traditions. It's just wonderful. Very, very beautiful. People are just open-hearted and um, cheering on the people who are performing, the people who are brave, who go up and do all the fun games. It's really lovely. Best, best, best thing ever. <laughs> oh my God! It's the best, it's the my best first event visit to St. Vincent and it definitely would not be my last. I love it. I love the love, the community spirit, the togetherness, the Christmas vibe. I love it. From Sweet Trinidad and Tobago, we love it. I'll be back again. <laughs> I'm a Vinci returning back home. Listen to me. This is the best event ever. I would not yes. miss nine morning for anything, like anything at all. You guys are doing an amazing job. Good morning. It's nine morning. morning. Um, they asked for all the visitors to go on stage, and I went on stage and participated. It was good. I particularly liked the praise and worship section. Yeah, it's my first nine morning. Um, no. Really, like we'll have like concerts like this in Jamaica, more long festival time, but not for Christmas. It was uh, good. It was good. It was a really nice experience. First one in a long time. So, yeah, it was good. Yeah, we went to our uh, nine nights, and again, that was splendid. Yeah, I did. I did. I just returned home uh, after 13 years abroad. Uh, so yeah, I know it's uh, celebrating nine mornings after 13 years is a long time, and I've seen so much change and so much in a good way. Because when I left, there wasn't uh, the change. So. I wish I was able to experience the change, but maybe next year. Oh, I love it. It's the best time for me. I, I'm visiting and I'm happy to be here for this night morning. And I'll definitely come again. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. It's so nice to wake up early. In the Caribbean, this is the, like the only country that celebrates night morning. And it's so unique and awesome. It's always a delight to come out of your bed. 